Even during a pandemic, the high holidays mark a season of remembering, a time when we recall those lost to us. And in the season of Zahor, of remembering, in the midst of a whirlwind of angst that sometimes leaves us forgetting even what day it is, we need to also remember that we are not alone, that we share our hardships with the Jewish Angelenos who died over 100 years ago in the Spanish influenza pandemic. In 1918, when the Spanish flu struck, the city's population was booming, rising from 319,000 in 1910 to 576,000 in 1920. About that time, the Jewish population of LA was estimated to be around 20,000. During the high holidays of 1918, the Spanish flu was striking California in its second wave. People turned to all sorts of remedies for a relief or a cure. Unlike today, in that outbreak, healthy young adults were considered more vulnerable than the elderly. While walking among the graves at Mount Zion Cemetery, a small Jewish cemetery in East LA. I could see the evidence written in stone. I noticed a large number of headstones of young men and women dated 1918 and 1919. Through research, I found the vast majority of those interred in those years at Mount Zion were between the ages of 18 and 42 and had not died as a result of military service. As today, the city's health commissioner ordered that all schools, colleges, churches, theaters, motion picture houses, and all other places of amusement shall close and remain closed until further notice. Mayor Frederick T. Woodman, eerily presaging the unsupported optimism of a few of our current leaders said, I hope and believe that it will not be necessary to keep the order in effect very long. Also like today, people and religious institutions resisted the closures. Downtown shoppers refused to social distance and resisted the instructions to wear masks. Starting in January 1919, the disease returned for a third wave. The members of Congregation Sinai, whose former synagogue is now the home of the Pico Union Project, were struck hard by the pandemic. LA's Jewish paper of record, the B'nai B'rith Messenger, reported many of their deaths. In late November, Congregation Sinai's spiritual leader, Rabbi Isidore Myers, wrote a poem which appeared in the paper for Mr. and Mrs. Cohen, whose son Julian had tragically died from influenza. Jewish in sentiment, under grief's strain, let faith omnipotent in your soul's reign, as it is heaven sent, not be the pain. Though the Great War ended on November 11, the war against the pandemic continued. The restrictions were finally lifted on December 3rd, the sixth night of Hanukkah. A message of increasing light was sent to the boys still over there, but it was too soon to let in the light. Though in the following weeks, the numbers of cases and deaths from the Spanish flu tapered off. It took months for synagogues to gradually return to their previous attendance. Today, in the midst of our own loss and the losses of our neighbors, Jewish Angelenos can find support in another stanza of Rabbi Meyer's poetry. Comfort knocks, pressing, open your hearts, Heaven's kind blessing never departs.
Shana Tova, Happy New Year. We hope you are here somewhere online. Uh, some people are telling us they're having challenges. Imagine that on YouTube. Um, but uh, refresh, go underneath. I just saw a video online from last night. Go underneath, it says live. Or you can also go to my Facebook page. It's there. And uh, we, we, hope, we, 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 hope, we hope we have a great morning together. I want to welcome Valerie Stern um, with our opening song. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning, praise for them springing fresh from the world. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, both of the one light, it is all. Praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation of the new day. Uh, Rabbi Wessel Scott, buddy, this is uh, year number six for you, I think, doing High Holy Days at the Pico Union, five or six? Yes, it's uh, from the beginning, I think. But Day one. Right. So our theme is remember your past, and that's really our focus today. Live for today is what we're going to tackle a little bit more on Yom Kippur Kol Nidre, and then trust in your future. What does this all mean to you? We've been talking quite a bit. Can you, can you set up what our service is going to look like? What, what are our road trips going to look like? Please. One of the main things, of course, of what we've done is the yoga. It's the one moment in the day that we 
moment we all have is ours. And it's our chance to live it each and every time. We are inspired by what came before us. We're inspired by who came before us and who gave us strength, who gave us courage. And we're building towards the future. We're building to provide a world of love and peace and for the next generation and every generation after that. And so, Rosh Hashanah, I go scared by you. Celebrate a creation of the world. And yet, in our traditional text, we don't often talk about creation. In our Torah readings, we talk about family. And family is not always true. But in that introspective, we see ourselves. We see our room for growth. Our chance that if we want it, we can always start with We always get a fresh new together. And so we think about who came before us. When we think about who we ourselves are looking for, we have the chance to recreate, rebuild, be welcome, be alive for the most perfect new year. It all starts together. Thank you, Scott. just amazing. The root of it comes from the word berech, which is your knees. And before you can pray, the imagery is that you have to bend your knees. In many cultures, that's a sign of weakness. In our culture, in the Jewish culture, and in the Christian community, and in the Muslim community, it's a time and a, and a, and a vision and a sign of strength. When you get down on your knees, it shows that you have enough confidence, enough strength to know that you're protected, that you're safe. Our call to prayer. Valerie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So when you hear the word Baruch Hu, you answer the call to prayer by acknowledging and, and bending your knee. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorach, blessed is the Holy One. not only about those who are with us, but those who are not with us. Here's to the ones that we got. Cheers to the wish you were here, but you're not. Cause the dreams bring back all the memories of everything we've been through. Toast to the ones here today Toast to the ones that we lost on the way Cause the dreams bring back all the memories The memories bring back Memories bring back You Shema That we've got Cheers to the wish you were here But you're not Cause the dreams bring back all the memories yeah. Everything we've been through Toast to the ones here today Toast to the ones that we lost on the way Cause the dreams bring back all the memories the Memories bring back Memories bring back you Thank you. Uh, Rabbi Scott, Micha Mocha is probably one of the most seminal, the most significant memories of the Jewish people, right? We're standing on the shores, and uh, what happened? What, what was that memory, and, and what can we learn from that memory? Because we're going to do Micha Mocha after this. Imagine being stuck in a literal, between a literal rock. I, I, 
those armies behind you a body of water in front of you, and according to the beautiful, useful mythology of toil, the water splits. And imagine, even though you're feeling the mud and the muck at the bottom of that sea, you know that with faith in your own courage, you'll get safely to the other side. And so upon reaching the other side, it's only a miracle that fills the people with thought and spirit. And that's the miracle we're trying to tell each and every time. We say, Nisa Mosa, who is like you? The divine force of power is Who is like you? So imagine that army behind us, that Egyptian army. Imagine the sound, what it was like. Imagine the emotion. He's a demographer. He's just a really cool guy who's going to hopefully contextualize our journey. Stephen Windmuller, Professor Windmuller, thank you for being here. And you're, you can go on full screen because this, this is your time, okay? There you are. We hear you. Can you hear us? Okay. Okay. 
American Jewish journey has been significant as it has been transformative. We recall that between 1880 and 1927, million of our friends had been great Christians who had arrived on these shores. Jews were set about to these conversations, including the launching in 1909 of the Union Our communal leaders and social service agencies, the means of welcoming and serving Jews as a new world. This would be the century in which Jews emerged from the existence of this group to ultimately become the masters of their destiny, to turn the construction and shaping their story. The 20th century was to be the Jewish century. Tragedy and silence were framed for it. The Shoah was practically the story of the world, while the founding of the Jewish state was launched in the era of Jewish sovereignty. Where in fact, for the first time, we would simultaneously build a viable democratic Jewish state and construct a vibrant, thriving, balanced state. And now, for the first time, Jews were able to define their future, and indeed, during the second half of the 20th century, Jews would enjoy political influence as never before. Historians have described the post Second World War era as the golden age of the American Jewish experience. As each measure, Jews have had a profound impact on the body of Western thought and knowledge, on their society, on their beliefs, and politics and culture. The extraordinary accumulation of the use of wealth that causes both parochial and secular as the users find this very scary. The quality and depth of the use of wealth that the world is a possibility in what we have become. We have seen the flourishing of literature, of music, the art, the evolution of new forms of liturgy, spirituality of worship, the expansion of educational agencies and schools and camps, and the growth of human life. This 100 year cycle represented a time frame of extraordinary creativity and diversity in the Jewish experience. Jews would be identified as rich cultures of four actors in the public arena, just as they would be seen as builders and leaders of institutions representing all segments of our society. The Jews were previously identified as marginal to the public. From this new construct, they have emerged to become the producers of great ideas, impacting and shaping public discourse, civic action, and institutional culture. The phenomenon of a minority people arising out of the ashes of Auschwitz to reclaim not only their work, but to also impact the broader culture, they thus summarize the Jewish century. Jews would see two principal contributions reflected as different aspects of their historic action. The voice of the prophetic tradition with its call for a socially just world would be their universal message. While their struggle to achieve knowledge, their historic dream of a national Jewish homeland would serve as their particularistic contribution. These ideas have remained in creative tension one with another. But this is the question of the Jewish century ended. I would argue a new factor in our historic history is actually now beginning. The most recent two studies on American Jews provide us with some valuable insights and revealing facts. We are experiencing lower synagogue affiliation patterns just as we see the emergence of alternative creative religious expressions, including people union. Where once there was a clear consensus about the Jewish story, today each individual is constructed who or her Jewish story. Today we are increasingly a community of diversity. As we are Jews by choice, Jews of color, we shaping and adding to our own legacy. For all types of Jews, this collective mythology of women of unity has given way to a highly personalized rendering of the Jewish message. We are residing in many ways in a post people condition. The growth of social media and the rise of alternative and virtual Jewish communities, especially now during COVID, are possibly reframing who we are and who we will become in this new moment. 
It's up to us to call ourselves to task To sing what's good and true To bring about redemption It's what we were tasked to do For What's the point of being here If we're not moved to change our ways Aleinu lishabeha It's time to change our ways We are carrying the stories of the ones who came before What stories will be told of us when we are here no more We commit ourselves to action It brings meaning to our day it's time to live our praise It's up to us to own the vision We're an answer to a call It's up to us to live the words we speak For the benefit of all It's up to us to bow down deeply there's a broken world to raise Aleinu Lishabeha It's time to live our praise Aleinu Lishabeha It's time to live our praise Thank you, thank you, Steve, Stephen Winmuller. Thank you, um, Dan Nichols wrote that last song, and thank you, Stuart. Uh, we should probably go around the room for a minute, and let me just say who everybody is, uh, because we are, we're a family now. I'm gonna button my shirt, too. Um, Stuart, dear, dear friend, Pico Union board member, extraordinary 
talent. Eric on drums, the new guy. He's only been with us for three years, but we love you, Eric. Uh, Shani, who's been with us for, I think, since year one. And we love you, love you, love you. Love since you. last year, you have a little, a little one. That's right. Uh, and hopefully great things coming. Coming. <laughs> uh, Valerie, you have a new baby since last year. Um, Mazel Tov. Uh, Chazzy, you've been playing and making music with us for maybe 20 years. Uh, you came from Mark Whitlock's church, yes. Core AME, and he, we've been friends and colleagues and grateful to you. Yes. And then Adam Levy on, on the bass. And then there's just a whole ton of people in the studio right now, uh, Marcus and and Ellie and Tom Weir. We're at Tom Weir's studio. Thank you. We stand on the shoulders of those who came before us, and we stand on shoulders who uh, are people who support us today. And and the next prayer, it's called the Silent Prayer, which is kind of ironic because it's a moment to scream out with all of your bakasho, with all of your requests, with all of your, your needs and ask for goodness and favor in the coming year. It, it begins with, well, you know what? I'm not a rabbi, so Scott, why don't you, why don't you just give us a one minute drosh on, on what this standing prayer should, just a context here. I'm gonna say one thing, the title rabbi, but the way you teach inspire all of us. I, I would definitely go with the category of master teacher. Uh, but what we're about to do is about silent. It's a chance for each and us, each and every one of us, to get in touch with ourselves. If you have a box book, it's just a high holiday prayer book, use the words that are on the page. If you just want to recite the words that are in your head and in your heart, take those few moments for yourself. Craig and I were speaking uh, only yesterday, and then one phrase jumped out. Remember us, Lord, but your friend will be right. And that phrase reappears. And the idea of IP reappears. Just this past weekend in our tour reading, we are standing with a heart to hide in Jesus Christ. And on this day, we celebrate the universal reality of a created, beautiful world for each and every one of us. It's for each and every one of us to remind ourselves what is the need to choose life in everything we do. And the way that we activate our minds and our hearts, our spirits and our souls. This to be law prayer, it's only as good as how we put it into action in the marketplace. It's not just words that we respect. So take these next few moments. If you can stand up, the Amidah is really the standing prayer. Remember, even though we're all in our own living room, we might feel that we're standing alone, but we are together. We are uniquely, unfailingly together in this moment. And we stand together alone. Let the sanctuary of people you need to guide you in the moment. Find inner peace and then take it out into the world. Pretty fly for a rabbi. I'm just saying. Uh, also, the, the, there are, for those of you who do not have a Mahzor, there are slides now that were images created by Bill Aaron, just an extraordinary photographer, with quotes that you can use for. Uh, Reflection. Inspiration, reflection, right, Stuart, if, if you so choose. So this is um, a video to accompany your prayer. Yeah, my, yeah, my, 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 my. 
נגיד גודלך, לדור ודור נגיד גודלך. ולנצח נצחים, קדושתך נגיד גודלך, לדור ודור נגיד גודלך. ולנצח נצחים, קדושתך נקדיש. ושבחך, אלוהי... Rabbi Wolpe, a couple of days ago, posted on his Facebook page just a beautiful thing about the shofar. It's the only sound that sounds exactly the same, sounds exactly the same as it sounded a thousand years ago, five thousand years ago, ten. It's the same instrument. It's the same sound. Shani, you do that for me every time I hear your voice. It's a sound that just brings me back Thank you. to the first time we met 11, 12 years ago. You... It's a sound. It's just, it, it's more than a, it, it's like a smell of a baby. You, you will never forget it. Uh, so thank you. Scott, uh, set us up for Avinu Malkenu and the whole homecoming and that, if you wouldn't mind, please. The story in the Torah of the creation of the world is like 30 books. It's actually not that much. And yet it is much longer when the Torah tells the story of the creation of the traveling sanctuary that accompanies the Israelites. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs points out that it's just a very striking that the comparison is just to the city. That the Torah, it's not about the world God creates the place. The Torah is actually about the space that we create for God. And of course, the rabbis also know that in order to love God, in order to act like God, in order to be God in we have to do the things that God, God Himself, goes to do. He feeds the hungry, provides shelter, goes lack of shelter. I think about the story of Abraham of being Abraham, our father, sitting outside his tent in a moment of his own and he sees the guests and he welcomes them. He doesn't know their angels yet, spoiler alert, spoiler. He welcomes them, he offers them food, he offers them drink, he washes their feet, even. His own thing. In acting godly, Abraham acknowledges that the world is not about the space that is simply made for us. It's about the space that we make for others. And so at this point in time, when we are once again learning how to welcome others back into our homes, how do we make ourselves welcome in the home of others? How do we find that space where we welcome in people who might have divergent opinions and ideas than us? How do we make sure that we leave room for conversation, for dialogue, for more openness and a willingness to meet each other face to face, I mean, El And as we get to Abinu Malkini, the music that to me is the most emblematic of the entire Yamin Dorak's high holiday service, we remind God that we too are imperfect. 
but because God loves us like a mother, like a father, like the benevolent king or queen, God always welcomes us back. And that is an image of what it means to be welcoming ourselves back. Take out the Torah, please rise. It's a video surprise. Hi, my name is Jonathan Jaffe Bernhard. As I think it's probably pretty clear to everybody, we are not actually doing the Torah reading at the Pico Union on Rosh Hashanah, but we are filming both the Torah reading for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur a few days earlier so that we can get them out to everybody in a safe way. The Torah reading that Scott chose for uh, Rosh Hashanah is chapter 18 of the book of Genesis. It is a brilliant Torah reading and a brilliant one for this particular year um, in this particular time. Because in this Torah reading in chapter 18, Abraham welcomes in three guests. And he welcomes in them in according to Rabbinic Midrash while he had just had his own circumcision. And this idea of welcoming people into our homes is a vital thing for us to consider. For the past 18 months, we've not been able to greet people. We've not been able to invite people into our homes. We've not been able to have people over in the way that we used to. And this affects us powerfully and dislocates us from our sense of home. So this year we emphasize coming home. And this year we emphasize not only making sure that our tent is open, but that our hearts are open as well as we begin this year. Chapter 18, verse one, book of Genesis. My name is uh, Quinn Loman. 
I've been reading Torah at uh, Pico Union for um, for about uh, 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 fi for uh, five years. I guess I would say when I'm finished, because uh, because then I won't need because then I don't need to worry about uh, practicing anymore. Um, about, about a week. Last year was crazy. Happy New Year, Shana Tova. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvora. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bahar Banu Mikol Ha'amin Venatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Amen Vairaha Elahav Adonai Be'elone Mamre Vehu Yishev Petah Ohel Kehom Hayahom Vaisa Enahav Vayahar Vehine Shlosha Anasim Nitzavim Allah of Vayahomer Vayaret Likrataham Mi Petach Ha'ohel Vaishtahu Artsaha Vayomer Adonai Imnaha Matsati Heheng Beinecha Elna Ta'avor Me'aho Avdecha Ikachna me'at ma'im Verachat suhu Raglehem Vehisha'anu Tachat ha'etz Vaikafat lahem Vesa'adu Libhem Ahar ta'avoru Ki al kain Avraham al avdecha Vayomru Ki ain ta'ase Ka'asher dibarta Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet Vihaye Olam Nata Bitoheinu Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Return again, return to the land of your soul, return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. If you are in need of healing, 
If you know someone who is in need of healing, the Misha Berach is another prayer that invokes our forefathers and our foremothers. Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May the one who blessed them and gave them health and courage, may we see the same blessing in our life. Please write in the chat if you know anybody who needs healing, if you're a doctor or you know a doctor or a nurse who is, is doing the healing, let's acknowledge them. Misha Berach Avotenu Avraham Yitzchak V'Yakov. Misha Berach Avotenu Avraham Yitzchak V'Yakov Just we just take like literally 30 seconds of, of nothing, which is sometimes the best. Something that I don't often give myself in life, nothing. Just to be just to be present. Not to be a human doing, but a a human being. So just 30 seconds of presence. When we started the Pico Union seven years ago, we, we weren't quite sure who we were, what we were, where we were, what we could be doing, should be doing. It became very clear very quickly that there was incredible food insecurity in our neighborhood. Food insecurity means that there is no, there, there's no opportunity to eat food that you and I take for granted. There are not 11 or 12 grocery stores like are within a mile and a half of where I live. There, it's, a, it's a reality where there's no grocery stores. I met a man named Steve Trapasso who worked for an organization called Seeds of Hope. And he was able to provide us with fresh produce. Produce to the tune of thousands of pounds of produce. This food justice program, Seeds of Hope, was started by Tim Alderson, who is our guest today. And I think through him, you're gonna learn a little bit more about us.
about me, about the Pico Union Project, about our neighbors, about our community, and about our role in providing and creating a, a, a community that is just and a, an environment that is healthy. Tim Alderson, my friend and, and current board member of the Pico Union Project, welcome. And uh, I'm just going to put you on the screen for your time with us and take it away. If I interrupt you, you'll feel probably pretty comfortable because that's what I, I'm so good at doing. If, if you don't feel, if you don't interrupt me, <laughs> there you go. Seriously, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for, for uh, inviting me. I gotta say, I'm, I'm both honored and humbled and also so grateful to be, uh, to be with you today. Uh, Seas of Hope, is, as Craig alluded to, exists uh, really to help alleviate food insecurity. So we do it uh, in over 100 communities across. Six Southern California counties, um, because there is a whole need. In my lifetime, you're a whole. Oh, but in my lifetime, uh, Los Angeles County has gone from being the top food producing county in America to now having the largest food insecure population in the country. In fact, uh, the food insecure population of Los Angeles County is now greater than the entire population. Of nine different states. So, sadly, our insecure, food insecure population could be a separate state. That's where it's starting to be. And the sad part is that there's more than enough food to go around. The problem is it doesn't go around. We actually produce 40% more food in this country than we consume. So, how can we have so much abundance and still have neighbors who don't? Ultimately, uh, food insecurity is an economic issue. You can't eat what you can afford to buy. Particularly if you live in a food desert, like Pico Union, uh, a place where, like Craig said, there's just no place to shop for food and get a meal in your And, as we all know, things have gotten a lot worse over the last year. So, before the pandemic hit, uh, all of LA County households. Uh, of that, of all of LA County households, 20% were food insecure. Uh, that's about too many people. But since the pandemic uh, and businesses closing and people losing their jobs, the rate of food insecurity has jumped by 70% to nearly three and a half million people needing food insecurity. They can no longer afford it. And as with everything else, uh, these numbers have spread themselves equally across demographic, demographic differences. Uh, currently, food insecurity affects approximately 20% of the white population in LA County. But the numbers are double that for African American Latinos. And here's the big problem people are actually going hungry to spread, becoming homeless. Low income families. Uh, typically spend upwards of 70% of their income on housing, which doesn't leave much left to buy food. And while you can ration the food, you can ration the rest. And to make matters worse, most food insecure households don't even qualify for federal nutrition assistance programs because eligibility is based on a nationwide standard that only looks at household income without taking into account the extremely high quality of food. So, what do we do? Well, it's good to be mindful, thoughtful, careful about these things, but quite frankly, that's not enough. If we have the capacity to do something meaningful to help, then we must. It's up to us. Can we solve all the problems in our community? Yes. Do we have the responsibility to do something? Yes. I like to think of it in terms of a simple equation. Need plus capacity equals responsibility. So if there's a need in our community that we have some capacity to meet, we also have the responsibility to do something about it. And 
capacity is multiplied when we collaborate with others who have complementary capacity, which is exactly why we partner with the people you need. We're doing our small part to make sure that perfectly food, perfectly good food, is the people and not the people. Where it's going to be to the So, saving the planet by feeding hungry people. That's it. Together with the Peter Union Project, we provide farm fresh produce to families who otherwise simply couldn't afford. And in addition to that, we've been able, uh, working with other partners, to provide a Peter Union vegetable and even fruit trees for people to take home and grow their own food to help provide for their families. And together, uh, we've planted fruit trees all over the Peter Union community. Trees that beautify the community, trees that provide shade and food in the community, and trees uh, that will provide bounty of fruit for literally generations to come, completely transformed. So, as we head into this Sabbath moment, wouldn't it be great if we could erase the lines between the house and the house? What if everyone had everything they needed? Having a fresh, nutritious food, unfettered access to quality health care, including jobs, affordable housing. What if? If only for one year. If only when the people you knew knew. What if? Need, plus capacity, people who suffer. There is great need. But together, we have great capacity to so, hold.
Chazzy, Tikiya Gdola, Tikiya Gdola, Tikiya. Give us a big one, Chazzy. You got it. A long one or big one? <laughs> Tova, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Rabbi Wessel Scott, the Mourner's Kaddish. Let us, uh, let us uh, come to the conclusion of this service. We have two more beautiful things we're doing and a very, very special guest, but can you help us right now? We're going to close our service with something that we just added earlier this week. In last week's Torah portion, it's written, I have put before you a choice, a curse, life or death. And the, the text says, choose life. In the High Holiday Liturgy, it's written, who shall live and who shall die? We just recited that. 
For the Jewish people, if we are being honest, we must recognize that we are a blessed people. We are blessed ones. The ones who have in this generation been granted what I view as a birthright lottery, the blessing of privilege, abundant choice, and extraordinary prosperity for most of us. These are words that would not have been recited 75 years ago by so many <laughs> Jewish immigrants who were unable to leave the horrors of Nazi Germany and the Holocaust and turn back from the shores of far too many countries, including ours, only to face their death in the camps of Europe, the death camps. Today we have been granted a blessing, and as such we are obliged to share our good fortune. As Hillel said, a rabbi nearly 2,000 years ago, if not me, who, and if not now, when? Today, as all of us sit in the comfort of our homes, streaming this service, I feel that it would be inappropriate to ignore the thousands of Afghani refugees who have no home, limited choices, and much like those families who came before us, the fear of what tomorrow might bring. History has shown in the book of Ecclesiastes teaches everything has a season and a time and a purpose under the heavens. I believe Judaism teaches us that we can and we must heal a broken world. And that now is the time, now is the season for us to step up. Aleinu, it is upon us, it is up to us to help those who need us. Afghani immigrants who arrived on our shores a few short weeks ago need us. They are calling us, and I say on behalf of the PICO Union, Hineni, here I am, here we are. I'd like to introduce Sarah Hashimi, who I just met literally five days ago, who has a request, a request of our community to share a portion of our abundant blessing with her Afghani community. I welcome Sarah to our service. Hi, Sarah. Here today, 
to take into our family here that have been resettled, and we help now. One family here in our neighborhood is composed of both parents and three children under the age of seven. Neither speak English very well, and the entire family has been through so much hardship. Living through the phase of not being accepted in several countries, they are citizens of nowhere. They've experienced homelessness, living in a tent with their young children for over five months. And then they have to flee from the persecution of the Taliban. There's a lot more to this story. It shows in their eyes, and it shows in the cause they seek to speak about. But by a miracle of God, they made it to the U.S. without any money, without any family or contact here. Broken in pieces, scared, nervous, and hardly trusting that life will take them well now. And myself, I'm very concerned about how they will make the monthly rental payment in a small studio apartment with a box We are told in the Quran, and I truly believe that with hardship comes peace. With hardship comes peace. And again, it would be with hardship comes peace. Can you help be their ease? Can you give them a trust in life, a night of rest and sleep, a trust in the community around them, a trust in humanity, a trust that will drive them to the support of the favor in the lives of others? There should be a slide shared soon that will have a number to pass with a contribution. Please, when it comes up, do not hesitate to give. All the proceeds will be used directly by Chicken Union Project to help maintain their houses. The goal is for one year, every single day, every single dollar really helps. As Tim mentioned before, need plus capacity equals responsibility. Please help. They could really use housing stability to find the seeds of their new life here, to allow them to seek work and a trusted future for their children. Please see the keys to your heart today. I'm wishing you all a happy new year as you have taken the start of this family's life in America and get them on their feet with a fresh new beginning. I'm so proud to have neighbors and friends like you. Thank you. Sarah, can you hear me? Sarah? Okay, you are incredibly articulate. What a what a passionate, compassionate story you just told. 100, we just set up that text to give three days ago. 100% of the money we receive will go to this family that we will learn more about in the coming days. Um, there's gonna be supplies that they need, beds, maybe a kid who left his trumpet in, 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 a, in another country or food that we will get from, from Vida Sana. But you have my word, Sarah. I gave you my word. You have my word. We will support one family for a year. Not because we must, but because we can. And that's our gift. That is our blessing. It's wonder. We're going to end our service now. If we could put the slide up somewhere small and end with the song of wonder. Because I believe in wonder and I believe in miracles and I believe that we are those miracles. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for being with us. Shana Tova. We can make that slide a Lately little smaller. I've been smaller. so disconnected. My feet don't want to touch the ground. Can't find my way through this dimension When all these voices drown me out I feel so far from my body It's hard to find my way back I'll ever be
be fearless I wonder if I end up alone Don't know where I'm going I wonder If what I say won't matter to someone If I go broke trying to keep on Please, please remember, we are the wonders. We are the ones who create the wonder. Let's make it happen for this family. Thank you for joining us. Please join us next week, same place, different times. We love you. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. And we're going to go off.